Namaste Manhotraji, thank you so much for uh, coming here and giving such an amazing talk today. It was really inspiring for me and I'm sure many uh, of the other people that were here. Um, but one thing I do want to ask just in general was, what has your experience been um, at this particular conference with WAVES? I mean, we have such an amazing attendance um, and so many variety of scholars and researchers. So what has been unique about this experience to you? So, you know, I've been, I was one of the earliest funding sources, Infinity Foundation, when WAVES started in the 90s. So I've been involved from the very, very beginning. Uh, the current uh, leaders weren't there at that time, and uh, WAVES was a different kind of an organization. So it's changed to something different, more mainstream, and much bigger, more people involved. It's amazing. I think Shashi Kejriwal deserves a lot of credit for creating an institution which is robust. Uh, it almost vanished because there was not much energy, but I think he's revived it and made it into something quite important. And I, I see this as the foremost flagship for the Vedic heritage, certainly in the Western world, uh, certainly in the US, uh, and I'm committed to it and I'm very excited every time they invite, I come because it's, uh, yeah, I meet a lot of good people, I connect with them, and we talk about old, old times, old stories, and a lot of sharing goes on. I learn a lot and we share a lot. That's amazing and I'm, I'm glad that you've had such a good experience. Um, one of the big causes this time around was the textbook situation that is happening. A lot of uh, workers in California are really trying to work hard to, to fix that uh, situation. Um, but my question is, what, do you think that this issue is more of a political issue or more of a social perspective issue? Political issue it's a political issue. Uh, and, and behind the political issue is some deeply ingrained Hindu phobia. Uh, and, and the sad thing which came, uh, which uh, I'm very glad it came out in the panel, is that, uh, you know, the people who are doing the heavy lifting and hard work for us are often being overshadowed by those uh, other groups that were named that are really splashing around for uh, uh, publicity and raising money, but really not doing that much work. They're more into building their own image. Uh, and uh, I think I'm very glad the panelists wanted to talk about it. The panelists called me beforehand and said we would like to talk about it. And uh, I said, okay, if that's what you want to do. So we have also got issues within our own, our own Hindu community in, in giving credit where it's due and not letting uh, you know, uh, charlatans just come and take over the limelight. And that's a very sad thing. One of the problems in the Indian community is people are scrambling, jumping over each other to get, uh, get into the limelight right away. And that's a bad habit. Because if we were more united and more ethical about who's, who's leading and who's following, we would be more effective and we would solve these problems. I completely agree with you about uh, being more effective. One of the things you said in your talk was making sure that uh, scholarly research isn't fossilized in time, right? And what steps do you think that organizations like WAVES and many of the scholars here can take to make sure that their research, their work, um, while being unified but is un also not fossilized, you know, is not lost in, in all of them? Well, what I do is I make sure my work is uh, sent to the opponents and I go there out of my way because I think uh, engaging them, responding to them is a very important thing to do. If you've never faced your opponents and you just with like-minded people who support you, you really don't know how good your work is or how bad it is. It may be mediocre and you're just getting accolades. It's very important to get out of your comfort zone and face the real enemies, the real opponents in debate, even where they are outnumbering you. Even when they have power and they don't like you to be there, you have to go and face it. That's the kind of victory we need. And that's what I've been doing for 25 years. And so I'm very tough and I'm very resilient and I'm happy to go and debate anybody. Yes, so this is what we need. Otherwise, we have so many people who just come to a forum, a gathering, and they meet other like-minded people and then they feel very comfortable and they're very much like big heroes in their own home, you know. And uh, so then it becomes more a matter of appropriating ideas from each other and trying to be the uh, big speaker. And nobody's doing real original work if that goes on. We need people who go out of this kind of a space into the mainstream and argue. Is that also something you would advise for just the attendees that are here? Yes, attendees should go into their school districts, into media, into their local communities and into the Indian circle where people don't, are embarrassed to talk about it and start talking about this. You learn a lot on how big the problem is and how to, what works and what doesn't work.
And my last question, I guess, is what do you think is the future of Waves and the future of Vedantic literature? I think uh, Waves has a good future. I think Waves is uh, Waves needs to bring in some young people. Uh, Waves needs to bring in some people who are the next generation and put them on the board and not like have a little youth uh, program, but l let them take over. Well, thank you so much again for coming here. You have done amazing work for all of us, inspired people like me. So um, I'm very excited to meet you and to learn more from you as we go thank on. You so thank, you. thank you so much.